Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friends. We call it the Three Amigos. How you doing, Dion? Howdy, doing great. Ready for round three. Awesome. And Matt, how are you? I'm super pumped to cover this one. These yeah. are my favorites. So uh, Matt and I have been doing this for 20 some odd years, uh, Dion for 10 or 12 years. So we've got almost 50 years of experience uh, in real estate investing. It's something that I, I guess I'll admit I'm frustrated by, but I see it coming. So I don't get hurt by it is real estate investing is a, is a path is a path to get really wealthy and rich for lots of people. Mm -hmm. Ad cycles come and go. Different people find different ways to be successful and then they push it and it becomes a quote unquote sexy, easy button. Then enough newbies come in and that easy button doesn't work in a new cycle and nobody told them and they end up losing millions and millions of dollars. I believe that there's without question the greatest real estate slowdown or crash in transaction is coming. I believe there's going to be millions and millions and millions of dollars lost in several best practice, easy money pitches. And, uh, you know, frankly, Ken McElroy talked about two of them yesterday. I was like, good for you, Ken, because he didn't have to, right? He's got such a big name out there. Uh, for him to talk about these was a, was a big thing. But uh, we'll go to Dion first. It sounds like he has an area that I wasn't thinking about. Where, where do you think uh, investors are going to lose millions and millions of dollars? We write so down. I, I want to see if I guess right. I want to see if I guess right. Hold okay, on. write it down, Matt. I watched Ken McElroy too, and he's got a point. He talks about syndications, and I think you've talked about this for over a year. Mm -hmm. Projecting rent growth okay. is is going to trip them all up. Just mm -hmm. because yeah. we had rent growth for a couple of years doesn't mean it's going to happen. Oh, and I think it's going to go backwards. Let's be very clear. And you talk about this in your book, where the Burr method is 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 powerful, but it's not a good strategy to start with. Too many slips between a lip and a cup, where you know you can get your ARV wrong, your your timeline wrong, your rehab costs wrong, rates could change quickly, like all of these things that can go to where it's, a, it's an advanced strategy for later once you have cash flow. Here's where I think people are going to lose the most. And I mean, literally millions. Wait for the crash, wait for the correction, wait for interest rates to come down so you can afford to buy it. Like that's not going to cause prices to go up. <laughs> And Mike, you sent me the list the other day of every year since 2012, there's been a reason to wait. Mm -hmm. You know, the silver tsunami, all the people retiring, interest rates going up in 18, pandemic, eviction moratorium, mm -hmm. interest rates, every single year, a reason to wait. Mm -hmm. Imagine, I don't want anyone to say it out loud. If I had waited and hadn't bought a rental yet. No, I'd you'd still be at, working, yeah. I'd still be working. I'd be looking, I'd be looking like Matt. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, Matt, <laughs> Dude, Ooh. not that pretty. Come on. Now. Dude, low blow. Low I, I like it. I approve. <laughs> I approve. Uh, I yeah. guessed wrong. I didn't get what Dion guessed. What right. did you guess? My guess is, I, and I love it, particularly because I think people really like smart people. I don't think people really dig clever. Uh, clever, there's a difference, right? Yeah. So yeah. smart is like you're, you're calculated, you kind of carried out and clever. Usually there's a level of deceit to it and a little bit of sleight of hand. And so I'm actually really looking forward to arbitragers getting their asses handed to them. Oh yeah. Or Enjoy yeah. that arbitrage, bro, where you were making 50,000 bucks a month doing this much. People on wall street do more than you. How yeah. about that for a slight, yeah. you know, and they're going to get crushed if they had any level or size of an arbitrage model because you got to remember like some of these top arbitragers they're making seven figures a year arbitraging units and they're doing it like 30 40 units they are not going to have enough fingers to plug the holes it's yeah. going to decimate them and that and here's the thing that's given the airbnb guys a majorly false sense of reality agreed right? agreed major false sense of reality hey Go matt ahead. for the for the kids yeah. in the back of the bus can you break down arbitrage really quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. So arbitrage is basically where I find a unit on Airbnb and I see what it's worth. And I'm like, you know what? That's kind of a premium week. Maybe I can negotiate or work it down. Then they basically buy and commit the week. Let's say it's 1200 bucks. And then they quote unquote arbitrage it and sell it for 1600 bucks. So they basically make that margin 1200 to 1600. They make 400 bucks for doing that. And one of the big hot things was you don't own anything, you don't have anything, but you do have a credit card. You could put an Airbnb on a credit card so you could arbitrage it. You could basically 
be buying low and selling it in, back into the market and making your margin. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is that there's larger arbitrage operations that might have 30, 40, 50, 60 units in place or in play. And so they've already paid out that 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, hundred thousand dollars. And they'll make 50 or 60,000 bucks on that. If the people follow through and actually take the week. Yeah. So I had not heard of that version of arbitrage. I will freely admit the arbitrage that I've heard of that I think equally blows up is what most people just call subleasing, right? Sure. I, I have an apartment. I have a house. I sure. lease it vacant. Yep. Right now. The problem I have with arbitrage, again, that clever angle is do you or do you not tell the landlord, right? That's, that's yeah, where I think you cross the line, right? You have to tell them, right? I always believe in communication. But anyways, arbitrage that I knew of it was you basically go rent a, a home for me for 2000 bucks a month because I'm a month to month guy for this okay. example. Then you spend, I don't know, 20 grand filling it up with furniture. And then you put it on Airbnb or VRBO and you try you to get too. 200 yep. bucks a night or whatever it is. Sure. Um, so your break even in that example is 10 days or just simply said, I know people that are doing that, uh, that have dozens of units. Now, again, think about what I just said. They signed a lease with me for a year. Yes. They spent 20 grand on furnishing. Yes. Airbnb is falling off a cliff unless you yes. own top A stuff. Yep. Now, again, this whole smart versus clever thing. These folks likely have a, a, a legalese in their contract that talks about um, unseeable or unknowable events. And I suspect they're going to lean on that for why they have to break the lease early. Like, oh, I couldn't see Airbnb falling 50%. It's not my fault, right? So I think a lot of these people who are doing arbitrage are going to stick it to their landlords um, right around. Again, I think arb I. I don't like arbitrage. I think it was clever. Yeah. It's uh, clever, not smart. And it's an easy, again, anything in real estate that appears to be easy just sucks people in. And eventually it event it helps, it helps them in the beginning, but it hurts them in the long term. It, it works. It, it works until it doesn't is the rule. It yeah. works until it doesn't. Same and thing I, with burrs, right? Yeah. I think it works. It but again, I, so amen. The other thing is it hurts more than it helps. Yes. Right. Collectively speaking, sure. some people will make millions. Most will lose thousands. Right. Right. So, th so that's, that's what, that's what really bothers me about all of this. Cause again, if you guys read my book, one rental at a time, I'm just a boring month to month landlord. Mm -hmm. It's not sexy. It's not fast. In fact, I tell everybody it takes five years to go anywhere. And then all these other little get rich quick things come on and it just, detracts from, you know, the, the blocking and tackling of learn your market, figure out average, do great deals. It drives me crazy. But what will happen is millions of dollars will be lost over the next two years. Some of those people will never return. Others will turn to one rental at a time going, okay, let's, let's do blocking and tackling. Uh, what do you think of all that, Dion? Yeah. I like the get boring aspect. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty active in the Bigger Pockets forums and Bigger Pockets Facebook groups. And so many people that comment are all about burr and flipping and arbitrage. There was a guest on Bigger Pockets who did arbitrage and she talked about, she's been doing it for like 10 years. She's retired on it. When she started, she was 18 and she was basically just renting out rooms to roommates, making more money than her rent. So doing arbitrage without telling the owner and people kind of attacked her. And she came back on a second one and said, I was 18. I didn't know any of this stuff. It's not how I'm doing it now. So like you had to defend it that, that clever is not liked, yeah. but what we're doing, the people who are watching that probably don't comment on Facebook about burrs and flipping isn't often comment worthy. It's, it's not, I bought a rental, my cash flow increased. I, I had an inspection done. I found some things to fix. Like it's super blase and so totally worth it. Yeah. It's the, you know, again, we, we talk about it. You make work optional in eight years. It's, it's get rich uh, for, sh uh, for sure. Not get rich quick. Again, don't, it happens every time and it will happen this time as well. And oh, by the way, the cake is made, it's coming out of the oven and there's going to be lots of you that lost lots of money. Look at you. That's good. Oh, I like that. I knew the cake reference was going to come up today. There That's you my go. Property. Yeah, I like So that was the rapping sound we heard earlier. <laughs> like, what is he doing? 
I like it. Yeah. So, um, a lot of, some of you listening to this got attracted by get rich quick. So these are the ones that I see they're going to hurt Airbnb. Um, again, if you do, if you're on a Kelly and you've got like the one of five properties on the water, you're going to be fine. If you're buying, you know, a mile away and down the street and it's a 1950s home with nothing special trouble arbitrage. We've already talked about that. Mike, real uh, quick on the Airbnb thing. Mm -hmm. How many units? This is a question for both of you. Sure. How many, and Mike, you can go first. How many, how many units do you think are currently in the Airbnb system for the U S oh, I actually have no idea. I'll just guess uh, 30,000. No idea. Dion. So I, I would have, I would have no clue. I, I know that there's two ways of doing it though. Yeah. The first one is buying a property that wouldn't lose money long-term mm -hmm. and benefiting from Airbnb when you can. And then the way that we've seen a lot of people do in the last year, it has to Airbnb yep. to make sense. Sure. I have so, no how many, how many. so take a wild guess at how many units you think are in Airbnb US right now. Um, 400,000. 400, 660,000. Holy. Yeah. That's just Airbnb. That's not even VRBO. That's just Airbnb. 660,000. Well, clearly I don't know the market. So, wow. Well, but here's, here's all my point is. No, I, I get 660,000 Airbnbers. How many of those units make money at a normal long-term midterm rental? Yeah. There's, there's so many people that overpaid because again, money rained down from the heavens. Fools got rich. Uh, the last two years were not normal. You overpaid because you saw 90% occupancy. It ain't happening in your C-class house. Ugh. Again, so Airbnb, painful. Burrs, we've talked about Burr a couple of times. Burr works in a up market. You can be the worst operator on the planet and make Burr work in an environment of low rates and easy lending. Not happening. And then the one that I know is going to crush people, and I've talked about it for six months, and it's, it's unfortunately already happening. People who are LPs and syndications. Now, of course, this is not all syndications. Mm -hmm. Most syndications that are initiated in the last year had bridge debt, variable rate debt, had unrealistic expectations. And Ken talks about, to Ken, Ken McElroy talking about bad syndications tells you how bad syndications are because he's not going to talk about his own stuff in a negative way unless it's really, really bad. And he just did that the other day. So kudos to him for that. So, and again, Ken's like, Ken actually worked really hard to say a line like this. I wish I had the quote, which I don't, but it'll be something like this. Now, let's remember, not all syndications are going to blow up and lose money. Some of them will just keep the money longer than expected. <laughs> right? If you expected to scoop your cash in five years, but you get it back in 15, is that really a loss? I mean, that's what he was trying to say. I'm like, well, yes. Well, it's not projected. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So unfortunately when markets change the easy money people get hurt and there are some bigger pockets alums uh who are raising syndications now that are going to hurt a lot of people well so, here's here's the one thing i heard a bigger pockets alum say that made me cringe there might be somebody watching so i'll explain it kind of you know barney style in order to invest in a syndication for a syndication to advertise to you you have to be an accredited investor. You have to have, and I'll probably get this wrong, but you have to have a million dollar net worth or make over $200,000 a year. I think that's the two criteria. It's a million it. dollar net worth X your primary home, but close enough. Okay, without your house. Okay. So the reason is syndications are risky. And the Bigger Pockets alum actually said it this way If you saved $50,000 and that was your life savings and you want to invest with us, I wouldn't be comfortable with that because if I lose it, you lost your life savings. I'm looking for somebody who has over a million dollar net work who would then invest $50,000 with us. So if we lose it, I don't lose sleep at night. Well, that's like a oh, whole syndications off the <laughs> list. Yeah. I, uh, so yeah, we, we, yeah, this alum, this alum is going to hurt some people uh, too cocky. Never didn't experience a down market. He's using his name. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. So, uh, Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. I do my live streams Tuesday afternoons, 4 p.m. Pacific. And remember, life is short. Eat the cake. Yes. I love that. Matt, how are you? Just another reason. I wish we were doing this in person. Yeah. You, you, 
Splitsies. Oh, I, got, I got more here. You might. Oh, I got <laughs> stuff. You know. Oh other. yeah, baby. Oh, that is All some food porn here. right there. I nice. love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I knocked my kids Matt over. Somehow. Yeah, I knocked my kids over to get to the candy. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're just like, uh, you're not going to share that with your dad? No. You want to go to your room? I'll get all of it. You might want to give me some of it. Uh, lumberjack landlord at Gmail. You can send me an email if you have any questions. Lumberjack or, at Gmail. What? Lumberjack, lumberjack landlord at Gmail is my email. Oh, so we you, get an yeah, email out this time. I, I gave my email out because in this particular one, I expect some direct hate because I wanted arbitragers to blow up. Oh, okay. And, well, yeah. and burrs and burrs are going to blow up. Like I didn't have any control of the market. I was just telling you about it with Mike and Dion a year ago. So pay attention. Um, and, uh, and then on Instagram and on YouTube, Lumberjack Landlord, and then live streams at 1130 AM Eastern time. Yeah. At the end of the day, folks, uh, buy and hold works. It's not sexy. It's slower than we all want. Yes. Uh, if you tie buy and hold with house hacking as an earlier one, it does go a little faster. Um, for anybody that's going to lose some money coming up, I'm sorry. Get it's, I, I feel bad for you. I've been there, right? I lost $150,000 when I didn't have that to lose. So yeah, it, 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 it sucks. But again, at the end of the day, real estate investing is a true path to wealth. Buy and hold works. Learn your market. Understand average. Do only do great deals. We're here for you if you want it. If not, go ahead and watch those get rich quick stuff. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Mm -hmm.